Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. I will have links below this video to their sites here. Rabbi Shalom Arash, Rabbi Laser Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Lon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Ovadia, Rabbi Daniel Asser, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobak, Jews for Judaism, Rabbi David Ashir, Rabbi Ron Ruvain, and Rabbi Yosef Chesney. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for the soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this is relating to the upcoming Parashat, Parashat Titzaveh, and this is from the Teferis Yosef from Rabbi Yosef Chesney. So I call this Expand the Definition of Self. So an orchestra consists of many different instruments. Each instrument looks different and has a different mechanism, as well as, as, well as its own range and sound. Yet altogether they form a beautiful symphony. If all the instruments would be the same, the sound would not be as glamorous. This same idea excuse me, applies to Klal Yisrael. Each one of us has our own personality and mindset, yes, yet all of us together form a beautiful orchestra that is greater than the sum of its parts. The Torah discusses building a Mishkan, which was the purpose and what was the purpose of the Mishkan? Why couldn't Hashem um, dwell amongst us without this structure? So the Malbim explains the Mishkan was a place that unites all of us and combines all of our, our individual kohos, which are strengths, forming a harmonious symphony. Each person has their own unique power to bring down the Shekhinah, which is the Divine Presence, um, and is necessary to have the combined energies of every yid. Um, the Mishkan is a place that united us. The Kohen Gadol wore a Choshen that contained 12 different stones. That's a, a, like something on his clothing. It's, it's a special thing. Um, the stones contain the names of the 12 Shvatimils of the 12 tribes. The Malvim explains that it symbolizes that the Kohen Gadol is the one who had the power to unify all of the diverse elements to form uh, one unified power. So from where did Aharon get this cape? Cap capac capability, excuse me, Aaron was a leader and a Navi, which is a prophet, in Mitzrayim decades before Moshe, yet when his younger brother Moshe was selected to lead the Yidden out of Mitzrayim, he was not jealous. Yidden is the Jews, <laughs> in case you didn't know. To the contrary, Hashem told Moshe, he will see you and he will be happy for you in his heart. So the Gemara in Shabbos, uh, Kuf Lamatet, uh, relates that because of this virtue, he married wearing the Hoshen. What is the connection between these two things? Perhaps we can explain it based on the following. Rav Shimon Shkop or it's S-H-K-O-P, I never heard of him before, says, we have a mitzvah to love other yidin, yet by nature we are self-loving beings. How are we to develop love for others? He answers that our goal is to expand the definition of self to include others. Through this, as an extension of our self-love, we will love other yidin. I would like to, and this is Rabbi Chesney saying this, I would like to illustrate this point with the following anecdote. One day during lunch break, when I was a Bachar, meaning when he was a young boy, I stopped in to talk, to talk, uh, I stopped in to talk to, um, sorry, I stopped in to talk in learning with my Rebbe, to talk, I don't, I, this sentence sounds a little weird, so, so he stopped to talk uh, with his Rebbe, Rabbi Abraham Shmuel Levitz, sorry about that, uh, sometimes I'm reading something and it doesn't make sense, I had with me a fresh cup of tea that was too hot to sip, um, Rabbi Abraham was disturbed that I wasn't drinking, but I told him that it was too hot, after a few minutes, he said, Yosef Chaim, drink. When you drink, my throat feels warm. This is an example of someone who loves other Yidin as an extension of himself to such a degree that he feels the warmth of the tea when someone else drinks it. Aaron succeeded in this area to such an extent that he was happy with his brother's good fortune. Uh, but it wasn't just with his brother. Aaron is the one that the Mishnah says personified Ohevet Habriot, which means to love the, all the creations. He was able to expand his definition of self to include all the Yidin. The Gemara is relating that as the result of this virtue, he merited to wear the Choshen. The Choshen was that which unified Klal Yisrael and aroused their remembrance before Hashem. Only someone whose heart encompasses every Jew is able to wear the Choshen. In what way was Aaron able to unify um, Klal Yisrael? So perhaps we can explain this based on the following. The Mesha Chachma, from uh, for Veschanan Dalit Chavtet says the Klal Yisrael as a whole is in essence like one body. Each person is a different limb. However, the strand that connects us is our connection to Hashem. And as much as we are connected to Hashem, we are all one unit. When we are disconnected, the bond between us and our fellow man is severed as well. Our connection to Hashem is what connects us to each other. 
I would like to illustrate this point again, that's Rabbi Chesney saying this, with the following story. One time when Rabbi Shimshon Pincus, Pincus Zatzal was in America raising funds, he encountered a Yid who seemed despondent. Rabbi Shimon attempted to cheer him up. Don't worry, things will improve. The man replied, it's hopeless. I suffer from a kidney failure and I'm in need of a transplant. Unfortunately, I have been unable to find a compatible donor. Without a new kidney, I'm finished. Hearing this, Rav Shimshon said, let's go. Go where, probed the man, to the hospital to check if I'm a compatible match with Rav Shimshon. And so, without any fanfare, he donated his kidney to his newfound friend. When he was asked why he donated the kidney to a total stranger, he replied, We are all children of Hashem. If my father's son is in need of a kidney, how can I not help him? So I want to say, in the side of this, I think I heard this story, read the story somewhere else, or someone said it, and that the person who received this kidney actually went to, because um, he was told, I think, never to say anything to anyone. I think this was him, or maybe it was some other rabbi, but I know I read the story somewhere, and then maybe when they were sitting Shiva, he went and actually told them that, because of your father, I am alive today. Um, and I think it was him, or it could have been some other rabbi. But I know I heard a story like this before, so from someone who is a well-known uh, gadol. Anyway, continuing on. So indeed, our connection to Hashem and our focus on serving Him is what connects us to each other. Aharon's job was to connect us to Hashem. Through this, he was able to unify us as well. Now, uh, Rabbi Chesney, when he wrote this, this was he, who's also brought, brought in Purim relating to this, but it's not going to be Purim yet. But I will. Uh, say this because it's, it connects to what, what the topic is anyway. So, and Perm is coming up soon. But uh, anyway, so when Haman was stating his prosecution against Yidin, he said, Yishanu im, uh, says Aleph, I don't know what Aleph stands for, it says Aleph with a line over it, Nifuzar Mifurad. So Chazal say um, that this Pasuk, this verse, is hinting at their shortcomings. Yishnu could also mean that they are sleeping. Their mitzvah is lacking in compassion. So the Shla says that the second part is also hinting at their shortcomings. They are spread out, they are lacking unity. For this reason, Esther told Mordechai, Lech knows it call Yudim, so go gather all the Yidim, bring unity amongst them. Why were they lacking unity? How did Mordechai reunite them? Perhaps this is hidden in the beginning of Haman's words. They are sleeping from mitzvot. By their connection with Hashem being weak, their bond with each other became severed as well. How did Mordechai reunite them? The Pasuk says, you should gather all the Yidim and fast for me for three days. By fasting and repenting, they reconnected to their Creator, thereby connecting with each other. On Purim, we give Mishlach Manos, which is we giving some uh, to, um, like uh, food to items to generate friendship. Why is there an emphasis on interpersonal relationships on Purim? It is because it was in this era that they were lacking and, they, and then improved on. Each year we focus on accomplishing the same. So let's take advantage of this auspicious time of year to reconnect to Hashem, thereby expanding our definition of self to include every year. So that's why... This, he brought this in relating to that because I guess this was written. I don't know what year. Remember what year this was, but around Purim time. But we do need to think about that, um, about how we can connect and change how we view ourselves to include others. And I hope and pray that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach, speedily in our days, and the building of our final and everlasting Beit Hamikdash. Amen. And thanks for watching.